Well, good evening, obscure mic people. It's your dude, Bark, coming at you from the obscure mic studio. Woo! I love wearing the robe on microphone review night. I love it. And I love bringing you a brand new microphone from a not brand new company and an interface. Got an interface here as well. Fluid Audio. Thanks to the folks at Fluid. Sent me over a little care package for you guys. Let's, let me show you. First off, we've got the Fluid Audio SRI2 audio interface. Yes, an audio interface. And yes, I'm no Julian Kraus by any means, but we need to do more on this channel. So interfaces, channel strips, vintage gear, headphones. Yes, I'm bringing headphones back. I just ordered a pair of headphones. Uh, we're going to see if we can find some good monitoring headphones. Yes, I'm mainly a voice guy, so we're mainly going to be monitoring voice. But we're going to see what kind of headphones are out there that you may not be thinking about that you might want to grab. On the cheap, we're not talking super pricey headphones. Maybe we'll get there someday. I don't know. I don't make a lot of money doing this channel, actually. I make quite the opposite of a lot of money doing this channel. So a lot of this product comes out of my own pocket, except for when folks like Fluid Audio sends me gear. Thank you guys so much. Like I said, we've got the interface. Let's take a look at the interface real quick on some B-roll. Everything comes in this nice cardboard box with a picture of the interface on it. We've also got a monitor dial, very sturdy, and it is metal. We've got a headphone dial, very sturdy as well, LED lit, very cool. Then we've got a dial to switch back and forth between your DAW and your input. So basically, a USB playback monitoring or monitoring of your microphone source. We've got 48 volt phantom power and a sum switch which will basically turn you into a mono monitoring. Otherwise you would have stereo if you wanted to do not the sum switch. Then we've got your gain dial again, LED lit. We've got a uh, indicator there, clipping, line and instrument button on both sides. And we've got the speaker A and B. We'll get to why there's A and B there here in, well now. Got your inputs, combo jacks and a headphone jack, quarter inch. We've got a USB port, external power, speaker B, right and left, speaker A, right and left. Front, back, side to side, metal, pure metal. Got the fluid audio, it lights up, and when it's unplugged, it doesn't. Very solid, solid interface, physically. Great dials, LED lights, pretty hard to beat the build quality of this interface all right as you can see the interface built like an absolute monster truck it is completely metal it's beautiful i keep looking at it because it just keeps catching my eye it is beautiful it's a beautiful interface beautiful interface love the fact that you got two uh sets of speaker outs there that opens up a world of possibilities at a budget price and let's check out what else they sent me even though it's right in front of you the fluid axis Large diaphragm condenser microphone from Fluid. I shouldn't steal that. That's his thing. It's not my thing. But he did steal my facial hair due to stealing my facial hair. And arguably, it looks better than mine. Arguably. Let's take a look at the microphone real quick in some... Bronson would be proud of me just for using the term B-roll. Let's take a look at the box here. Pretty large package that the Axis comes in. Go ahead and get this right side up for you. There's the frequency response chart, and it is a cardioid microphone with a 34 millimeter gold sputtered capsule. Smooth frequency response, it claims. Large dynamic range and low distortion. Great for lead vocals, instruments, amps, all that good stuff. Now, when you open the box to the fluid axis, the first thing you are going to notice is a beautifully 
crafted case with a very thick plastic handle, some nice locks. It's a it's a very intriguing first look once you open the lid. Got the Fluid Audio logo right there on the carrying case. Nice touch. Again, the latches and the handle, they just feel really, really good. They, they feel really good quality. Not a cheap box by any means. Not a cheap carrying case. We open the box. First thing we see is some documentation. And it is lined with some solid foam. It's not cheap feeling, cheap looking, nothing like that at all. Frequency response there on that as well. Definitely going to get a bit of a bright sound. You can tell that it's boosted in the upper frequencies. 20 uh, hertz to 20 kilohertz. 16 dB equivalent noise, which I don't even, I don't hear that to be honest with you. Got a pop filter. Your standard shield, but with the Fluid Audio logo. Like these, they're solid. Got a braided XLR cable, looks to be of high quality. I'll probably be using this one quite a bit. Very easy to put in and out of the XLR port. Got a metal shock mount. Haven't even unbagged this thing yet, so let's do that now. Another silica gel pack to throw away. What else can you do with those? Is there any kind of tricks of the trade? Any Mentos, put it in some Coke, watch it explode kind of shit you can do with that? I'm going to throw it away though. I'm sure there's not. Great quality metal. Five, uh, got the 3 8 adapter in there. Feels really good. Feels really sturdy. Sturdier than ones I've seen like this before. Screws right onto the mic. Got a really nice adjustment knob there. It just, this is, this is good stuff. This is high quality accessories. Comes in the, uh, the microphone comes in the fluid audio bag. Feels very thick. Doesn't feel cheap at all. Feels padded, which it is. And look at that. It's an MXL V250. No, actually, it is not. That big capsule gives it away that this is nothing like the V250. The color scheme's similar. The grill is soft like it, so maybe we borrowed some body parts from that microphone. But this is much heavier, even though that grill is soft. And the bottom ring is a lot smaller, and the top has a... Uh, edged out ring that's much different so there are definitely some differences let's open this up and take a look at it just so you can see this is its own microphone Ooh, oh, look at that you tech junkies lots of stuff to dissect here double sided pcb board so it's not just a, a one side and done you got the second side Looks good. I'm not an expert with this kind of stuff, but it looks really good. It looks really well put together. It looks like it's wired really, really well. And it to me, it, it screams solid quality. Got a nice uh, Fluid Audio logo, too. Raised up a little bit. Just, just feels good. Everything about it feels good. Let's go over some specs. I am reading off teleprompter. You know, much like presidents do. So, the SRI2 interface is a uh, two input two output 192 kilohertz 24 bit recording depth uh, the gain range on this is listed on b and h as 48 db of gain now that's not anything super crazy otherwise the specs on this audio interface look pretty good the headphone amp is pretty solid driving my sennheisers just fine just drove every pair i've got just fine Again, I am not Julian Krauss, but I have used an absolute ton of product, so I can at least tell if it's quality. I think the Fluid audio interface is quality, but you know what? We're going to go ahead and switch real quick to an SM7, not a 7B, it's just a 7, uh, but still requires a ton of gain. And let's just see if we can get this up to usable levels quietly, and then we'll start talking about the microphone. Okay, so we've got the SM7 plugged into the SRI2. I, I can get a usable level out of it for sure, but the preamps do get hissy. So let me go ahead. I can see I can get it right there and get perfectly usable levels, but again hissy preamp as far as this goes now granted 
Not everything can drive the SM7 or SM7B. This can do it. There's just, there's some, there's some premium here. I'll go ahead and. Okay. That's toned down to where there is none. No preamp noise really. But again, I'm not getting very good levels out of it. I will boost everything here, but it's just not getting where I need it to go. Not even hitting 12 decibels here to get it to hit 12 decibels. I gotta get it. I gotta get it right there to hit 12 decibels. Not fully maxed out, but again, there's a little bit of preamp noise. So with the SRI2, unfortunately, I would say you're gonna need you're gonna need a cloud lifter or fet head, in my opinion. Granted, for condenser microphones, you're fine. You're fine because no preamp noise comes into play until you have to drive it close to 100% for the SM7B. So I love everything about that interface so far. A little more gain would have been good. Otherwise, good product. Let's move on to the microphone. All right, so now we're back on the Axis large diaphragm condenser microphone. Like I said, has a bit of a familiar look collar scheme wise and grill wise, but that's pretty much where it ends, I believe. The shock mount, I'm using that. I'm using the braided XLR cable and this is the microphone. Let's go ahead and run some tests through it and then talk about it a little bit afterwards. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pineapple pizza. Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled pineapple pizza. Not the worst plosives, not perfect, but I've heard a lot worse. When you get right on top of the microphone, this is what it sounds like when you use proximity effect and get really close to the microphone. This is what it sounds like. And I think that sounds pretty solid and smooth. I kind of like when you get right up on it. I think it sounds pretty good, pretty good, pretty good. All right, let's do some off-axis rejection, talking into the front of the microphone, talking 90 degrees into the side of the mic, 180 degrees into the rear of the mic, 90 degrees again into the side, and then back around to the front of the microphone, and not too terrible there on off-axis rejection for a condenser. For a condenser, pretty solid. Uh, let's go ahead and bump on the table a little bit, see what that shock mount does. I'm kind of doing a little bam bam thing with my fists here. Some noise is going to come through, I'm sure, but go ahead and tap on the mount. Tap on the mic. Keyboard time. Talking while I type, and I'm typing while I talk. And I'm also streaming, bro. Streaming, bro. Streaming, bro. Streaming, bro. I don't game. I'm sure you guys know that, that have watched the channel for a long time, but I don't game. Let's talk about the package as a whole. It didn't come as a package. Separate, separate devices. The build quality, the dual speaker outs, two inputs, the just quality of the knobs, quality of everything to me makes the Fluid SRI2 a solid choice at 229. That preamp, I would have liked to seen a little stronger. That's my only, that's the only complaint I got about this interface. It is kind of a big one, but again, it's super freaking nice quality wise, aesthetically, build wise, everything else works great. The preamp works really well, at about 75%, and then after that, you start to hear a little bit of hiss, and unfortunately, the SM7 needs a little more gain. So, there's that. If you are an SM7B user, I do not recommend the Fluid Audio SRI2. If you are a condenser microphone user, or a dynamic that doesn't need that much gain, I highly recommend it. But again, use one of these you're probably better off not spending 229 on that interface. You're probably better off looking towards one of the others in its class that can push this without a cloud lifter or fed head. Or if you own a cloud lifter or fed head, by all means, go ahead. I personally love it. Probably going to keep it as a uh, on-desk device at all times because I just, there's something about it I love. But I'm also not a user of this very often. So I use my Avlex AVS 77 
end address broadcast condenser, and that's going to work fantastically with the Fluid Audio SRI2. Enough about the interface. Moving on to the microphone. I think this has a really nice, silky, smooth, just nice overall tone in a modern, kind of crispy NT1A like way. I love the build quality. I love the accessories. I love the box. I love everything about it. And actually, if I had my Rodecaster Pro and could just add a little bit of big bottom to this thing, because I would like to have just a little more umph in the low end, I would be very, very happy. Now, granted, I could easily get on top of this thing and then I don't even need my big bottom. So still sounds good getting on top of it. I feel it gets a little more broadcasty, a little more my tone, and I like it. But a few inches off, it's not thin for me. It just needs a little more oomph in the bottom for me, but that's just me. Otherwise, the top has that frequency boost, that little bump right there at the top for clearness and clarity, and I don't think it's harsh whatsoever. I think it sounds quite good, and everything else about the microphone sounds pretty good as well. I think it's definitely a very solid option, especially with all the stuff you get with the microphone. So for Fluid Audio's first attempt at a microphone that I know of, I'm pretty sure this is their first one and first interface. On that note, first and first, I think they did a hell of a job. This microphone in particular, I love the clarity. I like it a lot, a little bit of processing, and I'm gonna be pretty happy with this thing. Fluid Audio, 229 for the interface, the microphone and everything that comes with it, 249 so fairly well priced i would say the fluid audio access is a pretty intriguing option especially if you want a high quality xlr cord a really nice shock mount a carrying case a pop filter and a microphone that's going to sound nice and clear and present on anything you create with it so for that reason i think this is a pretty solid one the microphone i give the green light i like the way it sounds I think it sounds like a more quality version of the TM1 from Behringer. That microphone was just a little too sizzly up top, but I love the clarity. This microphone is one of those clarity champions, but with a smoother top end, in my opinion, than the TM1. So I do like this a lot. The interface, just that preamp away from a green light. I can't quite green light it because so many people use this right here. It's really hard to suggest something that won't push that if you own that. If you are a condenser person, by all means, the Fluid Audio SRI2 works great. I know I'm getting repetitive. It's the robe. It's the robe. It makes me just feel regal enough to continue talking about these fantastically built products from these microphone companies. Woo. Anyways, let me know what you thought about the Fluid Audio Access down below. Again, a great all-around package. I love accessories. This uh, will be on ObscureMics.com. I'll go into a further in-depth review of it, give it a score, and the accessories will play a role because this is some of the best accessories I've got with a microphone in quite some time. The Saramonic uh, Soundbird V6, that was good. This is good. Besides that, it's been a long time. So let me know what you thought about this in the comments down below. Uh, again, the interface, man, if you want a solid brick of metal, there it is. Great knobs, great everything. Just, I won't say it again. I won't say it again. The Fluid Audio Axis is out. The Fluid Audio SRI2 is out. Fluid Audio, thanks for sending them to me yet again. Looking forward to what you guys are doing next. And they have some headphones. And they look intriguing. And I think I should have them on the channel. So maybe I'll reach out and talk to them about that. Because they are known for their monitors. They've been, they've been doing monitors and doing them well for a long time. Now they're getting into the audio game otherwise with mics and interfaces so excited to see what the future holds for them thanks again i'll see you guys next time probably in the robe Woo. on obscure mics